EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour bring you the best young talent in the world of golf. From TPC Boston, final round coverage of the Boston Open. What a week and weekend this has been so far. Everything you want in a golf tournament. By nightfall, we will have our winner. As you take a look at the current leaderboard on this Sunday afternoon, a number of folks in contention, including our leader. So out to the action we go as we join the play on the tee at the par 5 seventh hole. Now from better than 300 yards out, a second to the par five. I'm not sure he got every bit of that three wood trying to get home to this par five and two, but still in the ball game for a birdie. Two good shots on this par five, leaves that simple little chip, and that was beautifully played. Trying to generate some momentum here at the seventh hole. This for birdie. That one brushed in. It is a birdie here at seven. And that puts him at two under for his round, four under for the tournament. Frank looking at the eight, par three of 213 yards, obviously short is trouble. Yeah, that's where it's narrow. Um, ideally, you want to fly that ball more, sort of at least 10 or 12 yards onto this green, where it starts to widen up. Well, he was asking for it to sit down, but it would not comply, and that's going to wind up over the back. Way too good, I must say. That was uh, just smashed. Man, a sizable putt left. Just a touch firm there. That'll be about three, four feet coming back. Yeah, that's well done, though. It is for bogey here at the par three. And he's going to slide backwards to three under par. Frank, I don't know about you, but I love a good hot dog and a soda at the turn. Of course, it tastes a lot better after you've made par. How difficult is that proposition here at the ninth? Well, if you stray with your tee shot here, you'll be making hamburgers, that's for sure. This one starting a little left off the tee. Yeah, that's a nice swing, and the result is going to be a tee shot that is set up just fine. Second shot coming up. Let's check in for the first time with Notavigay the third. 157 to the hole. Coming off a bogey on the previous hole. Got to get it back here. And a good approach shot, just not quite as close as what you'd like, but still solid. A long one coming up here for birdie. Yeah. 
10 foot putt left. Oh, maybe a misread there, and that curls by to the left. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And that's going to drop him to two under. Starting the backside with the 425 yard par 4 10. Shortish hole, fairway wood might be the play. And a two tiered bunker on the right side of the green is staring you down. Oh, that's a good drive down the left. It would be uh, much easier if that hole was cut on the right, but today you can see it on the left, so this shot just that much trickier. Second shot forthcoming from the left side of this fairway. Ah, uh, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. Tough start to the backside, Frank. Yeah, it doesn't bode well, too. You start losing confidence with the putter early on. Safely in. Well, it's a par here at the 10th. And he'll stay at 200. Frank, given all of the trouble that you can get into here at this par 3 11th, you'd have to say that a player's going to be happy walking off with three. Yeah, it's one of the biggest greens on the golf course, Rich. And, and too often people try and go a little uh, flag hunting. If the flag's on the right side, you don't want to pay the price by finishing up in the bunker. Well, that one didn't work out. It didn't look bad in the air. It hit the green, but didn't sit. Yeah, it was never going to stop. This from about 10 feet. So it is for a bogey four. And he'll drop back now to one under par. Now at the 461 yard par 412, how do you play it, Frank? Well, hit two of your best here. Somehow find the fairway, and then you take anything on the green here. You see a lot of sixes here over the years. Beautiful tempo to that swing, and this is going to wind up squarely in the fairway.
No missteps there. It is a par here at 12. And he'll remain in red figures at one under. Back-to-back -back par fours here at TPC Boston. Set to tee off Frank at the 13th. Nice big tee shot here. Once again, suits the long hitters. There's a little bit of a quarry that you've got to carry across. Great shot. Now Noda, his second from the fairway. Well, he's looking at 138 yards to the front, 159 to the hole, standing on the wrong side of par right now, looking to get back to even. That's got to be disappointing. Good line, the fairway, and the approach winds up in the bunker. Okay, pretty big swing necessary there, and that's not all that bad from that far away. Well judged, that is in for par here at 13. And he'll remain at one under par. Frank the 14th, this is a dogleg left, 495 yards, another case where the driver will set everything up. But you have to avoid those mounds on the left. They'll just snag your ball. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't hash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. There's always an adjustment of feel for a shot like that because you've got to judge what it feels like when you get so much grass between club face and ball. That's why the ball doesn't come out as quick. Well, that, not his finest effort, and it's going to leave a very anxious putt to save bogey. Ah, good putt there to somehow come away with double bogey. And he's going to fall back now to one over par. Moving now to the 421-yard par 4 15th, where strategic thought off the tee is important. Drives down the left side are best, but beware of the four fairway bunkers waiting there. It's so hard to bounce back after a huge score, especially when you're still reeling from it, but... Try and pull the screws back, back in the head there. Just take a little breath, maybe two. Decent swing, don't try and kill it. Exactly like that. Really good shot. That's a good shot, and more importantly, too, a green in regulation, so birdie chance. 
This is a 13-footer. That one just going to sneak on by. Okay, a solid par here at the 15th. And he'll stay at one over. Frank, fishing is a nice sport, just not at this hole. Yeah, a little left here, you'll be more than fishing, that's for sure. Now, there's a little mound on the right side. It's about twice the size of a coffee table. When the flag's there, you need your best. That one was running so hot. Okay, that'll be a par here at 16. He'll stay right where he is. 17th hole here is just 412 yards. Depends where you are in the round. If you need to make up ground, well, then you'll take on a little more risk. Try to go over that ridge and maybe have a wedge into this green chance to make a three. If you're just trying to protect and make a four, maybe you play it down the right side of the fairway. It gives you a longer shot in, but at least you'll be on the safe side. They've all been going straight up until that one. A little bit of a test coming up. Ball above his feet here as he decides how to play his second. Rich, there's one thing about good iron play. When you hit it and it comes off the club face, you know it's going to be close. More evidence there. Finishing strong, that's in for birdie here at 17. And he's got it back to even par. On to the 18th and a big par five to finish out the round. Yeah, fun way. Let's see, course record 61. What can you do here? Finishing hold here at TPC Boston always yields birdies, bogeys, and frustration. 530-yard par 5, tempting the longest hitters to carry a fairway bunker around 320 yards from the tee. If successful, an eagle is definitely in the cards. If not, well then par would be welcome. Just gave that way too much. Birdie putt coming up, and we go to Iona Steven. Now, it would be tempting to leave this one short. You can worry so much about the break that you forget to hit it. Demands a firm stroke. Yeah, tough to get that all the way up the slope, but that's not too bad from there. So a tap in there. That's for par at the last. That'll be a final round score of 73. Frank, the great thing about TPC Boston, it generates fireworks. It's that kind of course, and we saw it today. 
Yeah, and you can compare yourself, or you just have, with the best in the game, because they play there every year. No doubt about it, my friend. And for all of us here at EA Sports, alongside my partner, Frank... EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to showcase the finest young golfers from around the globe. Today, from the Quail Hollow Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, it's opening round coverage of the Charlotte Championship. This is going to be a compelling four days of golf. A lot of storylines to follow as we move through the weekend and we take a look at the leaderboard here in round one. A lot of folks fighting for the title, including our leader. Always nice to get that first one out of the way, and that's going to be a good one to get this tournament started. You know, some of the best stories in golf uh, come on the Corn Ferry Tour when someone is so far back of qualifying for the big show, the PGA Tour, the top 25, they do something miraculous. Nota Begay the third, 
has done it. He's the first to have ever shot the magic number of 59 in Corn Ferry Tour history. Went on to win four times in the PGA Tour. So, Nota, here we are in this in this spot. Our golfer has to do something insane. H- how do you make that happen when you know it's a long shot? Well, it's my round proof um, back when I did shoot 59 is that anything's possible. And that's what we love about the game of golf is you can go out there. Things may not be going your way, but one magical day could turn that around. But that's an absolute must for this player who is standing outside of the top 25 currently is going to need to make something big happen. Note, are you firing at every flagstick? Is it is it that kind of a mindset? It really is because you really have nothing to lose. If a player goes out there and they shoot a poor score, there's really nothing that's going to happen. But if they do go out and get off to a quick start, make some early birdies, get some momentum, things can happen, and that's how you reverse uh, the way things are going currently. Now to the second hole, the par four, and Frank, what's in store for the players? Uh, opposite shaped hole to the opening hole. This one dog legs to the left, and those enormous oak trees uh, have really become a problem with the tee shots. So no use trying to go over them uh, or around them. Just follow the fairway and play your second shot back uphill.
and that will do just fine. Now, a second here from 175 out. Ah, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. 12 feet still to go. Ah, the pace absolutely perfect there. Down the slope. It's in for a birdie. Part of this golf course, Frank, asking the players to hit some quality shots. T2, green, third is no different. Exactly. You get a dog leg right, then you get a dog leg left, and now you get a straightaway par four with just one bunker on the right side. It's 320 yards to get past that bunker. Needless to say, it needs to be avoided, but then the second shot's played downhill. It's right there in front of you. Getting set now for the second shot here at the third. Break it down for us, Frank. There's three ridges in this green, Rich, so you've got to be aware on where exactly the flag is. And that's not exactly ideal. Far from a tap-in for his par. You're being too kind. Uh, that's not at all ideal. Ooh, that's got a little bit more movement than you think, and that'll slide on by. That one in for a bogey here at the third. And that's going to move him back down to even par. Interesting for the 2017 BGA Championship, 
this fourth hole was brand new. How'd they do, Frank? Um, not bad, to be honest, uh, Rich. You know, Tom Fazio came in, did all this marvellous work, found a little uh, area over here to, where the players start to sort of turn around and play the very, very next hole. And, and this par three just sort of sits out there in front of you with, with not much around it. But it's, it is quite deceptive. Those three bunkers in front, you have to be respectful of wind and carry. And I think that may have surprised him. That carried much further than he anticipated. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four. And he'll stay at even par. Here's another really good par for 449 yard fifth. And what's crucial here is to split those two bunkers guarding the landing area right at the dog leg to the right. If you're able to do that, good chance to make a birdie. Just what you want at this point in the round. You're trying to find a rhythm, hit fairways, hit the middle of the club face. That's what they did right there. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. 145 left to the hole. The pin is in the front right part of the green. Uh, that's not too bad. Good shot. Inside 20 feet, I would imagine. So a good chance, really an outside chance for Betty. Completely missed the sweet spot there, and it's going to come up way short. And this will be a five-foot putt here. Yeah, that's good punt. It is a par here at the fifth, and he'll stay at level par. Now to the longest par three of the golf course. It is the six, 249 yards. Does play downhill. Frank, three's a good score here. It is. I know that green looks quite big, protected by the bunker in front, as well as the one over the back of the green. But often what happens is once you come out of those shooter trees and start to go on the downhill portion of this hole, you can actually get some cross breezes. Uh, that just sort of blow through across the top of the green and often that takes the ball out of the sky and it can easily come up short. That will be quite a challenge from there to get away with his par. If, if he can make this, I'll just take it and run to the next hole. Nope, good effort, but that's got to wander a few feet by. Okay, and it's a bogey here at number six. And he'll drop back to one over par.
Next up, the first par five of the day, the 546 yard seven. Two fairway bunkers on the left side presenting the only real trouble off the tee. Avoid those and you have a good chance to get home in two. That is dead center right down the middle here to start the hole. Had the distance right, just a tad offline. How about the chances for getting it up and down from that spot? Well, it's not in that thick stuff, Rich, so that's um, advantage number one. Really lies pretty good. I, I think it's a standard pitch. It's about a 60% make percentage from here. This for birdie. Ah, yes, runs that one right in. It's a birdie here at the seven. Interesting part of the golf course, the long three and then the short five and now a short par four. How gettable is this one, Frank? I think you need your Sunday best, Rich, maybe a little bit of help. But um, even the strategy of laying, laying up here is quite interesting. The two bunkers on the left, well staggered, and that big gaping bunker in the front right of the green. Um, it's really how well you swing. <laughs> I'd give it a crack. Take the head cover off. No issues here. That is into the fairway. So a big drive and not much needed to carry here for his second. That's a solid shot here into the eighth hole and a good chance now for another birdie. It needs to slow a bit. Okay, that, that's still going to be a good four feet though coming back. Okay, good roll there. It is a par here at the eighth and he'll remain right where he is. Again, good flow to this golf course, good variety. So coming off that drivable par four eighth, we now arrive at a super long par four. It's the ninth and it's 505 yards. You're not driving this one. Marvelous shot. Frank, what's ahead now on this approach shot at the long par four ninth? What's in uh, favor for the player, Rich, is the fact that both the left and the right side of the green slope back towards the middle. So you can almost use them like sideboards. Iona's down there. She's had a good look. This for birdie. Well, this is a big swinging putt from right to left, from start to finish. Fifteen feet away. And 
that's what these greens can do to you. They make you see things that just aren't there. And that one slides by. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And that's going to move him back to two over par. Beginning the inward half now with a par 5 tenth. It's not quite 600 yards, but it is close. It's a pretty good hole, Frank. It is. The only thing really in the player's favor is it plays downhill, so not quite its full yardage. Avoid that bunker on the left. will give you a chance to go for this par 5 and 2. But also look down there. If you look very, very closely on the left side, just short of this bunker is a nice layout bunker. If you can't reach, avoid that. It's so hard to bounce back after a huge score, especially when you're still reeling from it. But try and pull the screws back, back in the head there. Just take a little breath, maybe two. Decent swing. Don't try and kill it. Exactly like that. Really good shot. Okay, that's how you bounce back right there off the double at the previous hole. Frank, a chance to get it all back right here. Yeah, that was a great composure. Could easily be sort of like licking your chops, feeling down. But all of a sudden, just to stand up and hit a shot like that, that was Next up, the 462-yard par for 11, slight dog leg to the left. Carry the corner to avoid the bunker at the elbow. He'll have a great look at the green. You think the confidence is there after the eagle free and easy with a follow through there. And that is a very good tee shot. Frank, what's your thinking on this approach shot here at the 11? The second shot here at 11 is anything other than straightforward. There's a bit of a ridge in the middle of the screen. So there's a tendency for that ball to roll around a little bit. Be precise. Good little bunker shot, just splash it out, let the ball run towards the flag. Yeah, that'll do just fine. Had a pretty good run at that, and par should be pretty well within reach. So that brushed in for par here at 11, and he'll stay right where he is. Par 4 12th hole is pretty to look at, but you can't stare at it too long, Frank, because it demands all of your attention. Very much a corridor of a par 4 down there. I don't think you have to hit driver down here. You see a lot of players in the tournament, they'll only hit three wood, just find the fairway. Ball will kick a little bit to the right. Um, the reason why you don't want to miss this fairway or miss with the trees is because this green is built up and has the two bunkers that narrow the front entrance. So a fairway you must find. Those trees are like brick walls today. Hit that and went straight down into the rough. It is in the rough, but it appears to be a pretty good lie. Should have a go at this. His second now at the 12th.
I think you'll be fairly pleased with that, Frank. What do you think? I certainly do. It was so, so good. That one safely in. It's a par here at 12. And he'll remain right where he is. Par 3, 13th hole, 208 yards. And this begins a series of holes that will test even our best players. And the fast green on top of it. You know, Quail Hollow, Rich, as we know, is some of the quickest greens on the PGA Tour. Anything above this, above the hole on this green is going to be very, very fast. Um, also, the right side of this green, if you look carefully, if you try and hit your iron shot of the right side, it has a tendency to kick further right. And more than often, it actually rolls off the green. Looking to splash this softly onto the green. Ah, that came out soft, landed first on the fringe, kind of took some pace off, and that will leave a longish putt for par. Oh, are you kidding? Ah, this game's unfair sometimes. That looked in the whole way. Okay, that one finished off. It is a bogey here at unlucky number 13. And that won't help the cause one bit. Here's another chance, chance to be a hero. It's a par four and it's just under 350 yards. Give it some thought, you're feeling limber, you're launching them a long ways. Have at this par four. Well, you can't walk out and drop it any better than that. That is a fine tee shot right there. Uh, not quite on this 14th green, but pretty close. That's taking a risk, but it is a very good effort off the tee. Putters let him down a few times, but this for birdie. Ah, that's how you play this 14 pole. That's in for birdie. 15th hole, the par 5 is 577 yards and a chance here to really turn the momentum in your favor. You're right, Rich. Very much a swing hole because eagles are in play, sixes and sevens are also in play. Requires a, a long tee shot. You could say that on any par 5, but a long one downhill is going to go even further. And then if you've got the ability to hit your second shot very, very high. If you can do that, you can carry the front bunker and then you start to bring eagle in play. But err with a tee shot or err with a second shot, and sixes, sevens, anything's in play. I'm not sure he got every bit of that three-way trying to get home to this par five and two, but still in the ball game for a birdie.
Birdie putt now moving to his right. Now the putter on point late here in the round. Birdie's at 14 and 15. Here it is, folks, the Green Mile, one of the most daunting finishing stretches in the game. It begins with a 506-yard par 4 16th, a dogleg to the right, demanding a draw on the second shot to take on the water. Miss the green right. It is a treacherous downhill shot to a green that runs away to the water. Good luck. Yeah, nothing to fault there. Good balance, good follow-through, and a good start to this hole. This is an approach shot that will really test a player. Second to the 16th. No problems there. Really good approach shot. And now, good look at birdie. A birdie putt now at 16. Just has to get the ball started and it will work back to the right and toward the hole. Oh, that was on line. Just caught that left edge and did not want to cooperate. That one finished off. It's in for par. And he'll remain in red figures at one under. How much can happen here at the 17th? R3, 223 yards. This is where tournaments are won or lost. And it's also the signature hole here at Quail Hollow. What do you think of it, Frank? Uh, it's it's tough, Rich. It, re it really is because you have to make a decision. It, it plays about half a club downhill. That's five yards. And then the tendency is to try and aim it too straight or, in layman's turn, try and hit too good a shot. Please, just, just aim a little to the right. Put another yard or two on your tee shot to the right side. Just respect that. And then you'll have an outside chance of making two. You will gain on the field. I promise you. That's just okay, I I'd say. But he's left himself at least a chance at a par, Frank. Come on, Rich. Uh, I mean, you you're being too kind there. That's not ideal. Oh, yeah, worth an exhale there. That's a good par save here at 17. And he'll remain at one under par. There are many golf courses that are both menacing and beautiful. Quail Hollow certainly is in that category. And this is a great example. The finishing hole, 494 yards, the 18th. It's a downhill tee shot. It is framed by that nasty bunker on the right. The real trouble, and we've seen this with tournaments through the years that have come down to the wire, is that stream on the left. If you hook it a little bit too far, you're wet. Then there's that uphill second shot, and the stream is still in play. There's a lot going on here in this finishing hole. Second shot coming now from just over 170 yards. Okay, a good putt for his par here at the 18th green. And that will be an opening round of 171. Our featured golfer in a good position, you'd have to say. Just three shots off the pace after round one. Just got to keep the leaders in check, though. Can't afford to get uh, well, further away. So that should just about do it. For all of us at EA Sports, thanks for spending some time with us. On the road to the Masters.